Hello Solar Eclipse Timer users, this is Dr. Telepin checking back in. I love everything that happens during the partial phases of an eclipse. The period of time between C1 and C2 before totality happens. When you go to your next eclipse, especially if you go with children, you need to bring a colander. Why? Well, it has nothing to do with straining spaghetti. Let me explain. Eclipse event, open app. A really fun thing that you can document during an eclipse is the phenomena of pinhole projection. This is based on the same natural principles of light that allow a pinhole camera to record images. Another term for the pinhole camera concept is camera obscura, from the Latin meaning darkened room. A pinhole camera works when you have an object reflecting light. Those light rays pass through a pinhole, projecting onto a surface behind the pinhole that can capture the image. If the conditions are right, the size of the pinhole is right, and the distances from the subject to the pinhole and from the pinhole to the rear surface is right, and the projection surface is in the dark, you can expose an image of the object. But the object will be upside down and reversed left to right. More on that later. So during an eclipse, many, many things can be the pinhole. Because the sun is the light source, the pinholes can cause the projection of small crescent suns onto a surface. Many people during this last eclipse saw hundreds of little crescent suns projected on the ground as light rays came through the natural pinholes created by the tree leaves. Anything that has small holes in it will work. The longer you wait into the partial phases, the thinner and thinner the projected crescents will become. And this can be done at any eclipse, even a partial eclipse, where you will not get to totality, because this is all based on projecting the shape of the partially eclipsed sun. This has nothing to do with totality. Let's do an experiment that shows how this works. To explain, we will compare what happens with a regular camera that captures the photo on an imaging sensor. For this demonstration, we will not have things to scale or try to be realistic. This is strictly an overview to allow us to get to the concept of pinhole projection during an eclipse. This is not, I repeat, not a discussion of the physics of light and lenses. Our subject is going to be this statue of an old-fashioned doctor. This was given to me by one of my patients. He's holding a prescription pad that says, take two and call me in the morning. If you are ever clouded out at an eclipse and you call me, that will be my advice because there's nothing else to do. In this first setup, the statue is standing in front of a camera. If the camera takes a photo, we get a picture of the front of the statue. We all understand that. Modern cameras and lenses are like magic. The engineers who understand the physics of light and lenses are brilliant people. They have provided us with amazing products. We are so spoiled because taking a photo has been simplified so much. We see our subject properly framed in the shot, correctly oriented from top to bottom and left to right. Tap a button and we have our photo. Since light rays always travel in straight lines, when a photo is taken, the light reflected off the front of the statue goes straight to the camera lens. An infinite number of light rays bounce off the front of the statue and reach the lens. The entire lens structure helps gather the light rays, manipulates the light rays, focuses them, and exposes the image sensor at the back of the camera. And we magically get a correctly oriented photo to look at. Let me try to demonstrate this with a laser pointer from behind the statue. The laser light represents the straight rays of light reflected off the front of the statue reaching the lens. So light from the head and the face travel straight to the camera lens. Light from the left side of the statue travels straight to the camera lens. Light from the right side of the statue travels straight to the camera lens and light from the bottom of the statue travels straight to the camera lens. When we take the shot, we get a properly oriented photo of the statue. 
we have not given one thought to the path of light rays in the lens or camera, concave or convex lenses, focal points or focal planes, image circles or image processing. It is all just magically taken care of for us. But what happens if we replace the camera and the lens with a solid sheet of paper with a pinhole in the center? This is an old way of taking photos. For demonstration purposes, I have made the hole larger than a pinhole so I can aim the laser. But how can we possibly get an image of this statue on the other side of this sheet with a pinhole in the center? How can we expose an image sensor or a piece of film? Remember how large the front of the lens was that helped us capture the light rays? Now we only have a hole. It seems like the solid paper is going to block all of the light reflected off the statue. But something very interesting happens because light rays are still going to travel in a straight line in an infinite number of directions. So here's what happens when there's no sophisticated camera lens to help us out. The light rays reflected from the statue's head travel in a straight line. They go through the pinhole, but must go in a direction that is downward to get to the other side. Light rays from the left side travel in a straight line, go through the pinhole, but must go in a direction towards the right. Light rays from the right side travel in a straight line, go through the pinhole, but must go in a direction towards the left and light rays from the bottom travel in a straight line, go through the pinhole, but must travel in a direction that is upward. An infinite amount of straight light rays are going through the pinhole in all directions representing the front surface of the statue. So if behind my pinhole, instead of the white screen, I had a closed and light sealed black box with an imaging sensor at the back, I would expose an image of the statue that would be upside down and reversed left to right. That's how it works. That is the concept of camera obscura. Now, when using the pinhole concept on eclipse day with the crescent sun, we are not taking a photo based on reflected light. The crescent sun is the light source and it is bright enough to project itself. So on eclipse day with a crescent sun, this is a diagram of what is happening with any pinhole. The bright sun sends straight light rays through a pinhole creating pinhole projection. But it is the same concept as the pinhole camera. The sun will be inverted and reversed left to right. But it is difficult to visualize a flipped and reversed crescent with very little detail to orient you. That is why I did the demonstration with the statue. So. If you bring a kitchen colander to your next eclipse, you can do this. This boy is holding out the colander during the crescent phases of the eclipse. As the partial phases progress and the crescent gets thinner and thinner, he sees it happening on the ground. Every hole in the colander is acting as a pinhole and projecting a small image of the crescent sun. It would work with any kitchen utensils available in your house that have holes in them. You can do an experiment with your pinhole utensil. Take a picture of the projected pinhole crescents at 40 minutes before totality. Then 40 minutes after totality, take the exact same picture. Hold the utensil exactly the same distance off the ground, facing the same direction you did before. Take the picture with the same camera angle. Then look at your two pictures from before and after totality. What happened? Did the pitch of the crescents change over the hour and a half of time? Look under trees to see how the natural pinholes created by the overlapping leaves cause multiple projected crescents. These next images were done by folks observing the eclipse with me. One person made pinholes by crossing his fingers. You see that the smallest hole projected the crescent. This crescent was projected through the vent hole in a baseball cap. It's really fun to see and now you understand what is happening. Now, if you plan ahead, you can do something really neat. You can punch holes in paper in the pattern of your name and project your name on the ground as crescents. I did it at the last eclipse with the name Solar Eclipse Timer, and we did names for the other people in the group. Be creative and do other patterns or shapes. 
Another project you can do is to make a pinhole projector out of a shoebox. There are many instructions about this on the internet. This is one that I made for the Venus Transit in 2012. It has a hole in the box on one side covered with tin foil to allow poking a pinhole. On the bottom of the long side of the box, there is a viewing window cut out. This allows you to see the sun projected on the bottom surface, which is covered with white paper. Thank you for watching this Solar Eclipse Timer episode. I hope you now understand the pinhole phenomena and all of the fun ways you can enjoy it with friends and family. If you find this kind of information helpful, please subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below. Also click the little bell that will pop up. That will make sure you are notified when I release new episodes about eclipse phenomena. Also post comments and questions. If you don't feel like subscribing now, that's okay too. Just check in on this channel because my goal is to make it the best YouTube channel to prepare people for solar eclipses. Thanks again. I appreciate your time.